Hello, this is Gary LaRude, Technical Editor at Microwave Journal. I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar discussing software for processing antenna measurements presented by Lucia Salacqua at Microwave Vision Group in Italy. Before we begin the presentation, let me cover a few items about today's webinar. In the center of your screen, you'll see a window containing the presentation, which you may enlarge to full screen to have a better view of the slides. The window labeled Resource List, which you can access from the green box at the bottom of your screen, contains a copy of the presentation, which you may download at any time. The webinar is being recorded and will be available for replay within about an hour after we finish, allowing you to watch it again and recommend it to colleagues who weren't able to join this live event. You'll find a link to the recording in the event section of the Microwave Journal website. Because of the length of the presentation, we won't have time to answer questions live. However, Lucia will answer them by email. So we encourage you to submit questions in the Q&A box on your screen anytime during the hour. That's it for the instructions. Now let me introduce our speaker. Lucia Salacqua has been with Microwave Vision Group in Italy since 2007. Her research interests are antenna design and validation, post-processing antenna measurements, and software management. She received her bachelor's and bachelor's master's degrees in telecommunications engineering from the University of Siena and has co-authored more than 80 publications. Lucia, I'll turn the screen over to you now. Thank you, Gary. Good morning or good afternoon to everybody, wherever you are. And this webinar presents insights that is a multi-frequency analysis and diagnostic software for antenna measurement, post processing, and link with simulation tools. We have structured the webinar as follows. After an introduction about the inside software for explaining the motivation of the origin of the tool, I would like to show the different features, with particular attention to the last one introduced in Insight 2019. Then I would continue to present the different functionalities related to the diagnostic capabilities and the link between Insight and the simulation tool. Then I will switch to describe some practical application on antenna design and the link with simulation showing the potentialities of Insight. We will continue with a demonstration of the software that shows step-by-step -step all the working procedures and the evaluation of the results. But before starting with the technical part, I would make an introduction about MVG. The Vision group known as MVG, founded in March 2008, combines four industry leaders, Platinum, Orbiter Farm, Eni, and Rainforest EMC systems. MVG offers a system that allows for visualization of electromagnetic waves while evaluating the characteristics of the antenna, performing EMC tests and helping speed up the development of products using microwave frequencies. The MVG products and solution portfolio involves antennas, antenna measurements, positioning equipment, cell measurements, absorbers, EMC, NetLink, industrial control, and direct strategy. MVG has an international presence in nine countries, including seven production sites. The first task of the webinar consists of an overall explanation of insight. We will start with the region of motivation of the software, and we will focus on the different features that led inside a very few tools for a wide range of electromagnetic applications and areas. But let's start with the inside introduction. Inside is able, starting from near field of partly measured radiation patterns, defining a three dimensional geometry conforming and representing the antenna to reconstruct the equivalent electric and magnetic current related to a radiator under test. Here, a horn measuring the Starlab near field system is shown with the related inside post processing workflow. From the distribution of the equivalent current, it's possible to understand better how the antenna is working, and these results are in agreement to the expectation from the antenna design. 
The more detailed geometry, the more diagnostic information is available. In case the user would expect and apply the equivalent current as measured near the third in simulation, it is not needed to operate with such detailed geometry. But a simple box has been already validated as accurate near the third for exchanging data. The box has been selected since it is the most simple and common geometry type imported as near the third by all and most simulation tools. But let's go to discover the origin and the motivation of inside. In antenna design, testing is one of the fundamental steps of the validation process. In that, the measured radiation patterns at the different frequencies are compared with the simulated ones to approve the design and the manufacturing of the radiator. Sometimes some differences can occur in terms of radiation patterns between results from testing and the expected ones, as it happens for the linear array antenna here presented. But only from the radiation pattern is not possible to detect easily the origin of the problem. By science and the computed equivalent current, we can detect immediately the cause of the problem. And in this case, one of the array elements is not working properly, but only from the radiation pattern, this was not so clear. Thanks to this specific information, the antenna designer can investigate specifically the critical parts, and so the mechanical and the electrical model can be fixed or eventually optimized. For the linear array antenna, that antenna element and the beam forming network have been investigated, and the feeding of one of the antenna elements was off. The numerical method used by inside to calculate the equivalent current is called inverse source technique. This implements the integral equation rigorously based on the application of the equivalence theorem. This allows to substitute the antenna the test by a closer phase for enclosing the antenna, where the equivalent sources are placed. This equivalent surface is denoted by sigma r, and currents are imposed to radiate the original field wherever it measures. The measurement domain is denoted by sigma m, and the system of equation is discretized by the method of moment to allow Wilson's list of basic functions, and the condition of zero internal field guarantees the uniqueness of the system solution. All these operations are done entirely by sight. The integral equation approach constitutes a complement to more established tools such as plane wave or spherical wave expansion. It affords a greater generality and flexibility since it allows reconstructing source or fields on a detail used specified for things, like, for example, involving intricate, multi scale, and or large aspect ratio antenna geometry, and without restriction of the shape of the measurement ranges. Flexibility is also allowed in sampling rates and with respect to the availability of only some field components within the obvious physical limitations or implicit of unclick information safety. Insight can be applied to process any antenna measure data, such as near-field data, for example, spherical, planar, cylindrical, or fancy data. An example of such is load array operating in x band is here presenting, showing how starting from different kinds of phases and measurement systems, the equivalent current can be reconstructed efficiently, leading a good comparison of the results. But let's proceed now with the inside features. Inside version half a few months ago already offered the possibility to post process monofrequency important results, integrate the past multiple formulation for managing electrically large problems and it gives a prediction of only computational time allocated before calculation of the current, but it doesn't provide the possibility to gain calibrate the current before exporting data to the simulation tool. The new Insight 2019 leads very important improvements. MVG introduced the management of the multi-frequency post-processing with an additional frequency speculation based on radiation patterns or F parameters. This means that when the number of measured frequencies is high, 
Inside can reduce the number of computer frequencies while the remaining frequency points are obtained by manipulation of the existing results. Insight can interpolate automatically by analysis of the radiation patterns over all the frequency bands or based on the S parameter data that the user can load by S1P or S2P form of size. The interpolation leads a reduction of the computational time. And another important feature is the integration of the network connectionizing scheme in the density tool technique to far a reduction of memory requirements and computational time for very large problems with respect to the previous past multiple. Then a prediction of the allocated memory before calculation of the current is integrated for the basic formulation of the method with respect to the past version when only the computational time prediction was available. Finally, the effort of gain calibrated measure near pin circuits in the computational tool is now available. And this allows to use measured gain calibrated data in simulation. We move now to show the areas of application of insight for diagnostics. Insight can be used for many purposes, such as for antenna providing depth understanding of antenna radiation, for investigative measurements that happen filter your measurements by the effect of the surroundings, for calculation of time from the current, the field very close to the antenna, and generally in every point around the antenna, even far field, and it can be used for EMT analysis. Finally, it can be used for depth interpolation and extrapolation. We will proceed now to present each of these application areas in detail. Next on with the first feature antenna diagnostics and provide in-depth understanding of antenna radiation. For showing this functionality, we use a linear array antenna with near peak patterns as the measure of 1,930 meters. Here, an overlay of the antenna with each radiation pattern is illustrated. The patterns together with the reconstruction geometry are the inputs for the calculation of the current. This geometry is conformal to the antenna and it has been discretized by a triangular mesh. This is the distribution of the equivalent current in amplitude. In each side, it's possible to quantify the exact amplitude and phase of the current on each mesh element. And thanks to this feature, the user can compare on a certain position on, or on area the different amplitude and phase values. Here, we specifically compare the amplitude and difference of the different array elements to check compliance with the specification. In terms of amplitude, the results are in agreement with the expectation, where a symmetry is expected with respect to the horizontal plane that divides the antenna in two blocks or four elements. We analyze now the phase distribution of the current. We expect the same symmetry as for the amplitude, but it is not the case. Indeed, there is an expected distance between the second and the seventh elements of the array. This is a clear alert that something is not working properly in the antenna. And thanks to this information, we investigated specifically that part of the CD network, and we found a failure in one of the connectors that has been immediately fixed thanks to this fast diagnostic. Post-processing of the current for this antenna took some minutes of this, of this frequency, and this is a classical example of an antenna diagnostic and how inside can be used for checking the antenna manufacturing and production. The next feature is the antenna diagnostic and filtering. Inside can be used to reconstruct the current not only on the antenna but on the complete or part of the, of the measurement setup. So discovery of antenna interaction is feasible such as positioning, mounting structure, features, cables, but after detection of a problem and its motivation we can do more. For example, we can partial filtering the one radiation by switching off to zero the current corresponding to that disturbance. To show this functionality, we consider as example a uh, sleeve dipole, uh, sleeve dipole 1800, and here the design of the antenna is depicted. The antenna is composed by two radiators and a shop for minimizing the interaction with the feeding cable. 
for our class, we, we voluntarily remove the chalk from the antenna to create an interaction with the cable, with the cable in the measurement of the bank. The near field radiation pattern of the antenna has been measured in the Starlab system at 1,800 meters. This is the near field measure radiation pattern, and it is immediately clear that it's not the classical cardioid shape that we expect from a dipole. A ripple is present in the lower hysterical part of the pattern. This shows, of course, that a problem occurred during the measurement. So let's have a look at the measurement setup. And for better understanding, we observe it with the near field radiation pattern of a glaze. A fitting cable is present on the setup together with the collective animal. Since we would investigate the distribution of the current on both antenna and cables, we consider our cylinder as reconstruction geometry, including and representing the antenna and the cable. Applied in sight, we get the distribution of the equivalent current on both antenna and cable. And in this slide, we show the electrical current that are the most relevant for this antenna. By observation of the current, we detect a relevant level on the cable, especially just below the antenna. And this shows the strong interaction of, with the cable due to the chalk lifting. So the problem was given the but what we can do more than this? We could try to filter the current on the cable, switching off the current to zero. And this functionality is called filtering in inside. And it can be applied easily by the graphical user interface of the software, as I showed you during the last part of the webinar. We move now to another functionality that is called near feed to near feed transformation. This feature allows to calculate the E and H field in every location outside the reconstruction geometry in very near field, near field, and far field zone. Volumetric regular grid can be defined for field calculation from the current, and the graphical user interface is able to visualize the radiation even with phase animation to better visualize the propagation. Some examples are shown in this slide for different antennas, a grid dipole, a standard gain on, and a linear array. When we perform a near field of parking measurement, the field is calculated on a surface. We decide by the equivalent current from a single acquisition on a scalp surface, we can be easily reconstruct the field on a very large domain. This is an innovative approach for calculating security meters, evaluation of power densities, and for measurement security and noise. In particular, NVG and Sony have been recently published a study that demonstrates that a flag inside represents a valid approach for evaluating power density curves and verifying compliance with normative. In this slide, a Sony mobile and the staff is shown during the measurement in the last 50 years. From the measurement radiation pattern, the equivalent currents on a box representing the device are calculated, and then from current, the field on different surfaces from the device are computed with the corresponding power density. I will show you the near field to near field transformation during the demonstration in the last part of this webinar. The following application regards EMC and detect fluid radiation. All electronic devices present in commercial products and integrate in their intended enclosures need to be tested using EMC meters. Tests include verifying the radiation emission from the devices to be compliant with the EMC requirements. Instance can be used for this kind of test since the equivalent current will be a full radiation and pinpoint sources. Then, thanks to the previous functionality, near feed to near feed transformation, the user starting from the current can calculate the field values at precise distances, for example, at 3 meters. An example is representing of a PCB working in the frequency band 30, 1000 meters, shown in this slide. The emission from the PCB is very low. Indeed, the power absorbed by the load is higher than 99%. The spherical near field measurement of the PCB has been performed in the SunLab system, and the measured near field radiation pattern of 640 megahertz has been post processed by inside. 
the electric and magnetic currents are shown to the right. But let's switch now to the last feature of insight, interpolation and extrapolation. Antenna installed in modern cars are often highly integrated, and in such cases, the entire vehicle is contributing to the radiative field, in particular, at lower frequencies such as UHF. The complete characterization of the full vehicle is thus typically required. From frequency down to 60 megahertz, a widely accepted and cost-effective solution is a multiple spherical near field system in which the scanning area is truncated below the horizon to minimize the system dimensions. An example of automotive system is shown on the left in this slide, while on the right, a typical near field pattern measured in such system is reported. The partial near field acquisition of such system leads to truncation error if standard near field to party transformation is applied. Insight can be used as tool for reconstructing the field over the world sphere, allowing a mitigation of the truncation error in general measurement scenarios. Starting from the measured near field of parking data, Insight allows to compute electric and magnetic current on an arbitrary shape reconstruction surface, for enclosing the device. Then, from the current, the radiative field is calculated again, but over the wall sphere. A simple block diagram regarding the use of the equivalent current as near field to near field transformation tool for truncated near field measurement is here reported. As we can see, the truncated spherical near field, the double set, is directly used without performing any field padding, which would result in a discontinuous and unphysical field. The equivalent current computation is in fact a minimum energy operator on the truncated region, which allows for a direct computation of the current avoiding error caused by the processing of a discontinuous field. From the computed equivalent current, the party is finally evaluated over the full sphere, completing the near field to near field transformation process. This completes the list of the features regarding diagnostic and filtering. Well, let's continue now with an explanation of the link between insight and the computation electromagnetic tool. Electromagnetic analysis in complex scenarios requires the decomposition techniques. This widely occurs for antenna placement problems in which all the applications the overall accuracy of the numerical simulation is highly dependent on the accuracy of the antenna representation. High fidelity results can be reached if the electromagnetic model of the antenna are available, but often it doesn't occur. In case the antenna suppliers, in order to protect the intellectual properties of the antenna design, are reluctant to share the electromagnetic models with the antenna manufacturers that need to integrate the antenna on different platforms like aircraft, vehicles, ship, and satellite. And the link between measurement and simulation can overcome this problem. Whenever the electromagnetic model are not available or in case of on-shelf antennas, different approaches can be used. The first option is based on simulation creating a CAD model of an antenna or similar antenna. The second approach, if the antenna is available, is to measure the radiation pattern, creating a near field representation of the antenna and important in simulation tool in the final structure. The third possibility is the full measurement of the final scenario. Considering all the approaches, importing the antenna measurement in simulation means creating an effective link. This approach is highly recommended when the CAD model is not available or if we can have only simulated data. Moreover, it is also recommended when a full measurement of this scenario is not possible. Since such big system is not accessible like for large structure or vehicles. Thus, the link allows to use the real representation of the antenna and does not require large measurement systems for their characterization. Summarizing the link between MVG measurement and simulation tools, 
allows to share the antenna without uh, exposing proprietary data. It gives high fidelity representation of the radiator for an accurate characterization of the final scenario. It provides a representation of the physical antenna, real materials, real feeding conditions, real mechanical design. It allows to solve enormous realistic problems that are considered too big to be simulated or to be measured. Here in this slide, the complete list of simulation tools already linked with the MVG measurement by inside his reporting. After a complete explanation of the software inside, we move on to the second part of the webinar that deals with some applications. We will present the geodic D-array antenna that is a diagnostic and filtering application and two examples regarding the link with the simulation tools. A GMS test antenna on Sentinel satellite and a Sharpie antenna on a car model. But let's start with the geodic D-array antenna. The investigated antenna is intended as part of the European navigation system Galileo and is a pre-development model flying on in orbit validation element, Joby D satellite. The array antenna developed by EADS Casa Spatio consists of 42 elements divided into six sectors and uh, is fed by a two-level beamforming network. The beamforming network provides complex excitation coefficient of each array element to obtain a desired ice of loop shape in pattern. The measurement has been performed in the new hybrid facility in the Inspect CPCR as part of the installation and validation procedure. The setup is shown in this slide. The measured pattern of the antenna shows the action with respect to the predictive results and the actual pattern symmetry and the end of coverage gain is in fact not as good as expected. On the other hand, the measurement confirms very low cost polar levels in the boy side direction, and the root causes of the actual pattern asymmetry, as well as the design mechanism behind the achieved on active cross polar performance, has been investigated by Insight as a diagnostic tool. Furthermore, the filtering feature will be applied to isolate the sub array elements of the antenna and thus verify the realized complex excitation precision. The investigation has been performed without any prior information of the array and intended excitation. The input data for the analysis is the measured spherical near field data and the array topology and the reference coordinate system. The equivalent current technique has been applied to the measurement of the antenna considering a cylinder with a diameter of 1.6 meters and a height of 0.6 meters fully enclosing the antenna as equivalent of phase. Furthermore, in order to diagnose possible interaction with the supporting structure of the antenna, an additional cylinder fully enclosing the standoff used for the near field measurement has been also considered in the equivalent of phase. The equivalent electric current on three-dimensional structure computed by the equivalent current technique are here reported. As you can see, the computed current on the bottom part of the equivalent structure are low, meaning that the interaction between the antenna and the supporting structure is minimum. A filtering of the current on the lower cylinder has been performed imposing the current to zero. The radiation pattern before filtering is represented by the blue line, while the red curve represents the pattern after filtering. The differences are really small, confirming that the interaction between the antenna and the supporting structure is minimum. From a first analysis of the top part of the equivalent structure, an hexagonal central section executed with either amplitude weighting coefficients can be clearly identified. Moreover, three sections of elements executed with minus amplitude coefficient are detected on the annular circular section. This distribution is in agreement with the factor distribution coming from the amplitude and phase weighting of the array elements. 
In order to better understand the radiation mechanism and find out possible root causes of the anomalies observed in the measure radiation pattern of the antenna, the current line on the aperture of the antenna will be analyzed in more detail in the following slides. In particular, the copolarized equivalent currents computed by size are analyzed in this slide. The normalized amplitude with respect to the peak of the copolar distribution of the copolarized electric and magnetic currents are here reported. For better understanding of a pattern asymmetry, the currents of the inner ring have been isolated from the outer ring and the radiation pattern from both rings is reported in the plot on this slide. As we can see from the altitude the copolarized current, a nice symmetric cetacean is obtained in the, in the central elements of the array, while the outer element has less symmetry excitation contributing to the pattern asymmetry. In this slide, the complex excitation of the sub-array level is very fine, exploiting the filtering functionality available in inside. In particular, the three sub-array parts located on the outer annular section and exited with minor amplitude have been isolated from the hexagonal central section exited with higher amplitude. The three subarray parts on the outer annular section can be easily here be identified. In order to isolate the different contributes, four spiral filters have been applied to the equivalent current, computed by inside, by switching off the current they are not associated to the subarray section. Once the four spatial filters have been applied to the regional equivalent current distribution, the corresponding four, rad four radiation patterns have been computed starting from the selected set of currents. The computed radiation patterns are shown up to each current configuration. Finally, the complex excitation coefficients of the four subarray sections and the, has been obtained computing for each section the total radiated power over the full, full, over the full sphere and taking the same value on the both side direction. The obtained complex coefficient normalizers with respect to the central sections are reported below each element. The determined complex values are in line with expected values, especially regarding the amplitude. The obtained excitation phase is also quite good. In fact, the one phase shift of 0, 180 degrees between central elements and outer elements has been reached with a less than 20 degree error in the worst case. And this excitation error also contributes to the copolar axial asymmetry of the radiation pattern shown in the slide before. But let's check also the phase distribution of the current. The copolar electric and magnetic current phase distribution are reported in this slide on a normalized minus plus 40 degree scale. Some phase dispersion of the central element can be noted on both distributions. In particular, approximately up to 30 degree phase deviation is observed in the central part of the array. Some phase dispersion is one of the contributing factors to the axial asymmetry observed in the measure radiation pattern of the array. In order to discover the design mechanism, mechanism behind the achieved on axis cross polar performance observed in the measure radiation pattern, the cross polarized equivalent currents computed by inside are also analyzed. The normalized amplitude of the cross polar currents are here reported. The levels have been normalized with respect to the peak of the copolar distribution. As we can see from amplitude, the currents associated to the central part of the array, the cross-polar excitation is high at single element level, only approximately 20, uh, 12, sorry, dB, below the copolar peak. Nevertheless, the on-axis cross-polar radiation of the entire array is very low, as the started form from a well-designed antenna, as observed previously. The reason for this phenomenon is clearly visible by the cross-polar phase distribution shown in this slide. The on-axis performance has in fact been optimized by sequential rotation of the array elements, and the phase distribution shown that a three elements in sequential rotation scheme has been adopted. 
Consequently, two different phase shifts that we implement in the default network. Minus 120 degrees, zero plus 120 degrees. In order to shape the cross polar pattern, creating a node in the vertical direction while maintaining the in phase polarization excitation. It should be noted that such a complex feeding mechanism for the optimization of the array cross polar performance to give rise to some residual phase errors regarding the popular performance. Obtaining an accurate minus plus 120 degree phase shift is rather demanding, especially over a relatively large bandwidth. This cost most probably explains the root cause of average popular phase dispersion discovered and shown in the previous slide. Thus, the nice cross polar performance of the array carries a price in terms of achieved popular axial asymmetry of the radiation pattern. These examples show how size can be applied to a complex radiation system for operating a precise diagnostic and better understanding of the manufacturer antenna. The second example consists of a GNSS antenna on sentiment sucking light. This is an application of the link between measurement and simulation. The GNSS antenna in Sentinel satellite structure has been designed, manufactured, and measured by the RUAC space in the frame of global monitoring and environmental and security missions. There are three missions, the Sentinel-1, that is for CERN, the Sentinel-2, that is an optical mission, and Sentinel-3, that is a radar transmitter mission. Each mission has different satellite model and antennas, and this study regards the first mission for Sentinel-1. The antenna model consists of two stacked pairs placed in a short cylindrical cap. Four points feed are implemented with capacity coupling on the bottom patch and as an isolated feed network. Design work is concentrated on the antenna radiation in the back direction and possibly to have uh, the same good coverage at low elevation angles. The GMSS antenna is characterized by the fancy beam tie pattern with a minus plus 70 degrees of coverage working at frequency between 1,227 meters to 1,575 meters. The goal of this applicative example is to show how the antenna can be measured standalone and its radiation can be simulated on the satellite model. We use for this example TSC Microsoft Studio as simulation tool. This is the workflow of the link. The first step consists of the measurement of the antenna. We start from the party pattern in this example, and the second step is the preparation of the near field source by insight. The third step is importing the measure source in TSC Microsoft Studio and simulation of the mm -hmm. satellite model. Here, the preparation of the measure first by inside from the measure radiation is shown at 1,220 centimeters. Starting from the pattern and defining our reconstruction geometry as a box, this is the distribution of the computed electrical equivalent current. The computed audience box representing the antenna is important in CSP and positioning on the spacecraft model as shown in this slide. As the source is important in TSC, it managed as the other simulation sources that can be rotated, translated, and uh, can be positioned in the final location. Here, the E and each field of the search is reported, and MBG performs the simulations of the results that we have presented. This is another representation of the search, so this is by case addition. And this simulation has been done by integral equation solvers, and here the mesh domain is represented. Other meters can be used by the near field source as input, like time domain or others. Finally, this is an example of fast mean pattern simulated by the measure source on the satellite, and here a three dimensional directivity pattern, copolar component is represented.
Let's continue now with the last example that regards a shark in a plane on a car model. And this application deals with the link between measurements and simulation. And the antenna in the test has been designed and manufactured by Caliaro. And the antenna is being measured in the GSM, LTE, and UMTF frequency band from 698 meters to 2690 meters. In case of a flash mounted antenna on structure, for accurate results, we recommend to measure the antennas on a circular ground plane of at least two wavelengths diameters. This is for imposing the correct boundary condition. Then, by an additional post processing of the measured field, we can extract the edge capturing from the finite ground plane, and this eliminates the truncation effect of the plane. This processing is based by a mirroring of the field with respect to Z equals to zero. And this technique is called source edge diffraction extraction, also known with the acronym LTE. The complete workflow is shown in this slide. The shark fin antenna on Phoenix circular ground plane has been measured in the sublock system. Here, the radiation pattern of the antenna at uh, 925 megahertz is reported. The shape of the pattern is affected by the destructive effect of the thin ground plane. Then, a virtual ground plane condition is applied in order to obtain an infinite ground plane condition. This infinite ground plane condition guarantees that the antenna is independent to what can be around it, and that it is possible to reconstruct the equivalent current on a box representing the antenna only. Finally, the near field search related to the antenna can be imported and placed in a generic position and a generic scenario. In this case, the measured search by insight has been used in the simulation tool Altair Pico. The audience box has been imported in Pico and simulated after placement on a car model. The results from Pico simulation are reported in the following slides. No foreign information has the antenna field model is needed for the simulation, except the near field search and the position and orientation of the radiator in the final scenario. In this slide, the three dimensional and two dimensional cross radiation patterns are shown at all the three investigated frequency points, showing the variation versus frequency. Then, also, the induced surface current by the antenna on the vehicle has been simulated as shown in the slide. The effect of the vehicle body has also been investigated at all the three frequency points. Comparison between considering or not the vehicle body in the simulation is here recorded in terms of radiation patterns. Antenna radiation has been analyzed on the two principal car planes. Finally, the effect of an antenna position on three-dimensional radiation pattern was studied selecting four antenna positions on the car, as is shown on the left of the slide. We can observe from the plot on the right that the variations are small at all the investigated frequency points by antenna position variation. This slide concludes the task two dedicated to the inside application. The third part of the webinar is dedicated to a demonstration of insight. I will show you in a few minutes how it's possible to calculate the equivalent current starting from a radiation pattern and defining our reconstruction geometry with particular attention to multi frequency computation and interpolation features. I will visualize the results including current, speed, and animation. I will show you how to filter the undesired effect and how to calculate the near field very close to the antenna from the current. Finally, I will demonstrate how it's possible to export a measured near field search from inside to a commercial simulation tool. For this demo, I will use a measurement of a dual reach horn, SH4000, measured in the sunlight system. The measurement has been performed from 4 gigahertz to 20 gigahertz. Let's keep to the demo. This 
is the graphic I usually explained on the side. This is the, uh, that, uh, is, that is composed by the B3 and the visualization area for the results. We create a new process that is called demo by the new functionality to create products, and then we can start to work with inside. The first step is to import the measure field. In this case, we, we import the near field data, but we can, for example, use near field or passing data for uh, our computation of the carriage. We load the file, for example, in a format that is called uh, PLS, this is an NVG format, but this is an ASCII format that you can, uh, that, uh, that, uh, you can use uh, simply. If you have uh, other uh, formats in uh, your system, you can just uh, convert your data in this uh, simple ASCII format. The ASCII is compatibility with inside. So the file has been imported. This is the measurement uh, between uh, uh, 4 gigas and 20 gigas with uh, 1 uh, gigas of test. And then, now we need to create the geometry for the reconstruction of the human encounter. In this case, we will use a uh, um, already prepared geometry that we will import in a set format that is conformal to the antenna. Indeed, this uh, geometry represents exactly the antenna. But for example, we can also use other geometries that we can create inside using primitive geometry and using Boolean operations to um, operate on these primitives and create more complex structures. We can uh, visualize the reference system for better managing of the geometry. So after we have the uh, geometry and the field, we can create the computation. So we have the computation. We can give the name, uh, generic name to the computation. For example, here we use the name of the antenna and the near field and we load the near field data for the inside reconstruction. The next step is the stage to create the mesh. This is uh, the dialog box for creating uh, the, the mesh. And uh, we have a different uh, mesh type that we can select. In this case, we select uh, mesh and simplified. And here we have a visualization of the frequencies uh, that we have loaded. Uh, we can use all the frequency points or a uh, subset uh, of uh, these frequencies. For example, we use in this case uh, a, sub, uh, a sub band from 6 gigahertz to 8 gigahertz, and we will create a mesh uh, which uh, uh, length of the triangles is lambda over 4 at the higher frequency, so 8 gigahertz. We apply the creation of the mesh and the triangular mesh is created and visualized in the visualization model. Now, we can proceed with the next step, that is running the computation. When the computation is run, we can just at the beginning of the computation have a prediction of the computational time and of the allocated RAM. This is an important information before to proceed continuing uh, the computation. This is a new feature that we have in the last version. Then we can uh, continue with uh, the visualization of the results when the computation is finished. And we can, for example, create a three-dimensional plot, selecting the visualization of the pure and current and things together, and selecting also the frequency that is visualized. For example, we select uh, only the visualization of the current initially at uh, 8 gigahertz, and this is uh, a view of the equivalent current that we have computed on the geometry representing the antenna. The currents are represented by color, the amplitude and the phase, and uh, these arrows represent the instantaneous state. For example, we can see 
that uh, we can change this scale. For example, here we use a 30 degree dynamic scale, and uh, we can observe a concentration of the uh, of the current, a uh, high level of the current in correspondence to the uh, to the ridge and to the aperture, like we expect. And uh, we can have a look better on the aperture and uh, in particular attention of the instantaneous phase of this error, we can animate the current, checking the other depolarization of the current that is quickly linked to the radiated pattern. Uh, and so we can uh, act on the polarization and we can uh, then know better the visualization of the pattern that is radiated consequently. We can stop the animation. And uh, together with the equivalent current, for example, we can uh, visualize the, the radiated field. We can select the field here, the frequency to be visualized, a GDS also here, and we can have a visualization of the field getting a transparency level together with the current. And uh, we can also visualize the reference system and uh, so we have a very complete representation of what we have done uh, with inside. And so we have uh, an innovative uh, way to see the, the radiation properties of the antenna with respect to only the measurement. But what we can do more uh, at this stage, we can uh, perform some post-processing from the current. And the first post-processing that I would like to show you is the filtering that uh, I explained during the uh, our presentation. We can add a filtering that means to switch off to zero some current in, in some part of the, uh, the construction structure. And then uh, we have this, uh, this tool inside that allows easily to select a region where we would like to switch off the current, so it's possible just to draw very easily the, the, the mask and uh, see uh, the current uh, are switched to zero, the gray area. We save the mask and we can run the filtering. In this way, we are calculating again the field from this filter current. So we are cleaning the pattern from some undesired effect. And we can plot again, as I showed you before, the current and the field together. This, um, this is our three-dimensional plot, but uh, I would mention that you can create also two-dimensional or one-dimensional plots for comparing, in particular, one-dimensional plots for comparing the field before and after filtering. But let's proceed now with uh, uh, another post processing for the current, that is the near field to near field transformation. The near field to near field transformation allows to create a calculation of the field uh, in every position of the, that can be defined outside the construction per se, but only also on, uh, um, on regular grids that are defined in closing uh, into a box, a sphere, or a cylinder. In this case, we define um, just a regular grid enclosing into, into a box. And uh, this is the set that uh, we choose for this, uh, for this set. So this is a set of points where we would like to calculate the field. And these functionalities allow to calculate the field even very close to the antenna. In fact, if we run the computation, see the results, and uh, you can see that uh, we, we can evaluate the field very close to the antenna. So we can go in areas very close to the radiator where only with only the measurement we cannot do and we cannot analyze. We can uh, also, for example, visualize the complex field. We select, for example, here the Z component. And uh, so we have uh, uh, an idea uh, of the radiation, uh, considering also the phase, uh, the phase variation of the field. And we can also here, like for the current, animate the radiation. And uh, we have the propagation of the field very close to the antenna by phase animation. 
I would mention that uh, now inside we have a multi-frequency computation, and it's possible to, to apply any circulation of the data that allows to reduce the number of frequencies uh, to, to be computed. We can select, uh, for example, the type of uh, interpolation. We can select uh, an automatic basis for interpolation that is based on radiation patterns, or we can uh, use an advanced interpolation that is based on parameters that the user can load by this dialog box. Finally, the user, um, if the user would like to export the equivalent current to the simulation tool, like we mentioned before, we don't need to um, use a synthetic geometry, but the box is already accurate. So we, have, uh, we can calculate the equivalent current on a box uh, in the same way as I showed you before. And uh, this is uh, an example of current that has been reconstructed on a box. After that, we can just right clicking on the computation, we can just export the current to one of the simulation tools that are compatible with inside. And this concludes this part of the demo. So we arrived at the end of this webinar, presenting inside. For more information and for technical support, you can find the references below. And thanks for your attention. Thank you, Lucia, for the very informative presentation. You covered a lot of information. We don't plan to answer questions live at this time. However, Lucia will respond to your questions by email. So if you have a question and haven't typed it in the Q&A box on your screen, please take a moment to do so as we wrap up. And then, as I say, she will respond by email. I'd like to thank Lucia Salacqua and Microwave Vision Group for today's presentation covering multi-frequency analysis and diagnostic software for antenna measurements, including the demo that you just saw. The webinar has been recorded, and it will be available to watch again within about an hour from now. You'll find it at the Events section of the Microwave Journal website. From the home page of mwjournal.com, click on Events, then Webinars, and you'll see a link to the archives at the top of the page. So if your colleagues would benefit from watching today's presentation, please do let them know. Thanks for joining us today.